Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, X-Transbots hits us with a shot of their G1 Overdrive and a masterpiece scale G1 Motomaster. Also, Flame Toys reveals their new Leo Prime. Today is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021, and this is episode 417 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that's having an inauguration celebration. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hello, how are you doing? Creator, producer, and star of Empire of Rust, Editor Mike. I've just been elected president of the Transmissions podcast. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> False. Fraud. <laughs> Fraud. <laughs> Demand <Good> a news. <laughs> recount. <laughs> <laughs> And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. It's a celebration, bitches. Let's talk Transformers and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) All right. As always, we start off the show by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who give us money on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you so much for continuing to support the show. It's your contribution that helps keep us going and keep the engines moving, the engines running, doing stuff, making transmissions co- complete and continue to, you know, pump out every every week, every week. So thank you for that. If you'd like to become a Donatrion, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. And that's where you can sign up either on Patreon or PayPal. And that will help out the show. Another way to help us out would be to buy some of our merchandise at our T Public store, and that is at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. You can also check out our friend K Girl store at tpublic.com slash user slash superstar K. So we've got lots of cool shirts, masks, other merchandise. Check it out. Enjoy. Kick us a couple dollars, and that also helps out the show. Anything you buy from T Public, if you go through our link, that will help us. So you don't even have to buy transmission stuff. Just if you were planning to get something from T Public, just remember transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. And we've also got this week's Empire of Rust episode. This is episode 41. It's already out, should be in your feeds already. It's on Monday. Uh, it came out on Monday. This is what we have here is a failure to separate. And this is continuing the exciting story of the Empire of Rust crew as they fight against Cybertron first. As they have, uh, it seems like they've, they've taken over the planet right now. So it's, 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 uh, the, the guys are a little bit behind the eight ball. They're, they're in a, they're in a tough spot. You know, they're public enemy number one at this point. So. I totally want to spoil it, but I know that like half the people in our uh, our chat over here and in, and in Discord like they don't they don't want they don't listen to the episodes as they come out. They'll they'll put a backlog in for like two months and then they'll catch up. And it's like, <laughs> damn it, I can't spoil it. <laughs> yeah. it. People have to wait until they have a room to paint and then they'll listen to all of them at once. <laughs> I can definitely say I have a I'm I'm I'm, I'm waiting to binge. 41 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> that must be one hell of a house you need to paint there. It is. Well, he is about to have a baby. So you have to paint every room in the house, not just the baby's room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta wait. This baby's gonna be the one who's painting. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody lives rent free in this house. <laughs> Do we really need to have a talk with you <laughs> and tell you that you can't have your child do forced labor until they're a minimum 10 years old? Oh, I think we are the ones to have a talk with you, Mr. Mike. And the fact that <laughs> you Canadian can. laws might be different. <laughs> <laughs> this is about raising children. You make them work. This, this went in a weird direction. It did. <laughs> make your children work. Listen to Empire of Rust, everyone. It's it's a good show. It's it's our live play action RPG focused on Transformers, set in the IDW Transformer comic universe. It's a really With good no show. No child labor. 
with no child labor. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And uh, we enjoy it. Well, I enjoy it. I listen to it all the time, but Daryl's waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to it Damn at some you, point. Some point. I'll, 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 I'll get to it. You'll binge like 60, 70 episodes and then you'll wait another 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good, good to know where we stand. That's how much he cares about the, the, all the work you put into your podcast, Mike. <laughs> I care. That's all right, Daryl. I've never watched a Trips to the Store video. <laughs> See? <laughs> Way more of those. <laughs> Got like 300 of those. I'm just waiting for a room I can paint, you know? Exactly. <laughs> I get it. See? We're, we're driving. We get it. <laughs> All right, before we get into toys, there's one more announcement. This is an exciting one. I'm going to throw this one to Jeremy because uh, he's he's got a cool real, cool announcement to tell us about. Yeah, it, nothing to do with Transformers. I'm but, having a baby? Uh, I'm, oh. No, <laughs> thankfully not. Uh, I'm going to be on a podcast reality show called America's Next Top Podcaster. Uh, I am one of 12 contestants, and I'm as shocked as anyone else that more than 12 people applied. <laughs> <laughs> sucks for that um, one guy that got cut <laughs> yeah but you know I, I applied at the 11th hour and got in and i'm now i'm i'm stressing over the amount of work i'm gonna have to do it's structured like a a typical reality show there's like we're gonna be weekly challenges and someone gets voted off every week by this panel of three judges and we have to make a 10 minute podcast about whatever the challenge is about uh, every week and it's going to be stressful. Um, we just started our first recording tomorrow and then I don't know when the episodes are going to come out, but I have a whole episode of Yakko Yaks. I recorded talking about it. So if you want to get more information about it and my feelings of complete inadequacy, uh, check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes. That's awesome, Jeremy. I'm, I'm excited for you yeah. now. You were more excited when I, when I told you that it was just me. It wasn't everybody on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Less for me to do. <laughs> now, I mean, now I've got to come up with something to get on a show. Mike, you've got to come on and get on, get on some kind of reality show or some shit like that. I mean, Charles, Charles did it way long ago. Yeah, we really got to step up our game, don't we? I haven't done it. Jeremy's on something now. But yeah, I forgot. Charles was on a game show. Yeah, I lost on Millionaire. Hey. <laughs> You got there. That's the that's the, the the trick. Nobody remembers that you 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 lost uh, embarrassingly. Nobody nobody at all. <laughs> yeah, no one remembers. Well, you, you did them. put the clip on YouTube, so you mean people yeah, can go and look yeah. for it. I mean, you don't even that's look true. like that person anymore. So I mean, <laughs> but I'm still proud of you. I was jealous. You met female Regis. <laughs> Meredith Vieira. <laughs> yes. So I'm excited for you, Jeremy. Yeah, thanks. I can't wait until you win because we know you're going to win. Nobody, nobody knows more <laughs> about podcasting than you. <laughs> Lots of people. Do. It's a podcasting trivia show, right? <laughs> yeah. No. Nobody knows. Nobody knows more about podcasting about podcasting than you. Well, no, I did put it when I had my kind of interview for kind of them to edit into the show i did mention that you guys say i'm the cause of and the solution to all of our techniques this is, uh, <laughs> that is true <laughs> they could have just come to me for a direct quote <laughs> <laughs> that was what that reference call was for i got a phone call and they just said oh we need you to ask you about jeremy uh is he uh and, and you're like podcaster you're like, fuck that guy and i just laughed and hung up <laughs> Well, we we are wishing you good luck, or or I don't know, break a mic or something. Uh, the, just Whoa, do a great hey, job. Hey now, what are you doing to me? <laughs> <laughs> a microphone. I should break a microphone. Not, hey, not a mean, mic. Those are expensive, Charles. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to break a leg. I don't know. I mean, he sits he can all replace day. a microphone much easier. He sits all day. He I mean he can, he can. I do have to go downstairs. <laughs> so. I mean, like once or twice, like. But we will be rooting for you if there if there is voting, we will make sure to vote for you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there is, but yeah, we'll, we'll put links in the show notes when the episodes air, and yeah, you know, so just be on the lookout. I don't know. 
All right. Well, now let's talk about some toys. We're going to start the show off with uh, some new information about some upcoming exclusives. Something that uh, I full on expected to see. We never know anymore with what exclusives are going to get done. Uh, looks like we're going to see a uh, Generation Selects Voyager G2 Ramjet. Uh, that is, uh, that's pretty cool. I am a big fan of that G2 Ramjet uh, color scheme. And uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a mold that's getting used quite a bit right now. So uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. And looks like it's, uh, it's got a SKU number and a product code and everything like that. So uh, nothing in here about uh, where it might be coming out. Um, but uh, yeah, so selects, expect to see it in a store that uh, gets the select stuff. You can probably most definitely expect it to be on Hasbro Pulse at some point. The other one, though, is one that uh, I didn't really expect to see because it's really only been... Uh, once uh, come out once and it was a build a figure that was uh, it's going to be generation selects deluxe transmutate uh, and this has got a product code and a and a, a SKU number and all that stuff already um, no price either but uh, again it's uh, it's another one of those ones that's going to come out and uh, you know you can you can sp uh, specifically uh, buy it from one of those stores that's carrying them uh, likely Hasbro Pulse uh, I, uh, Target might get it. Um, maybe uh, GameStop, maybe Amazon. Amazon. It might be an Amazon one. I'm trying to think of all the places that are getting these right now. And uh, Amazon looks like it might be, you know, the destination of these. Um, might be something more along the lines of, uh, like, here we're getting all of these at EB Games. So uh, I'm hoping it's EB Games because it's so super easy for me to get these at EB Games now. Anyway, uh, Mike, what do you think of uh, these two figures coming out? Uh, are you a fan of transmutate uh what do you think they'll do with him and uh the the g2 seeker uh ramjet mold what are your thoughts on that i'm not surprised by the ramjet mold or the ramjet figure at all uh it seems like they're it seems like hasbro is doing a ton of, of repaints and figures for the for the seeker mold uh even more than they did the the classics mold like back in the day so uh, yeah, I, I have. There's no surprise about this, and there's probably going to be a whole bunch more coming out pretty soon too. So, I expect this this train to be uh, well and fully milked milked for as as much as it's worth. Uh, that being said, I've already passed on the uh, the siege and the earthrise uh, seeker molds, so I'm not about to to dip into it this late. I have a full set of the the classics seekers, and it's like you know what, I'm good with that. Um, but I mean, it, it's good that this stuff is coming out for people who want it, because I, I, from what I understand, that mold is fairly well, uh, fairly well looked at and fairly well liked. So, more power to them. Transmutate is going to be interesting. Uh, you didn't, you said that we didn't know the price, but if it's a deluxe, it's likely going to be around twenty, twenty-five or so, uh, like a typical deluxe. Uh, I'm wondering if it's going to be a new figure or a repaint of something. Uh, and the only thing that I can envision it being a repaint of, and this is a, a, a big deep cut for it, I really don't think this is going to be the case. But in the Collector's Club comic that was out back in the day, they did a pre-Beast Wars comic where Transmutate was in it. And I... I, I Someone will have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they did transmutate as the uh, the Prime RC mold, which, honestly, it was a really good-looking design, and it might turn out to be a really good-looking figure if that is the if that's the case. But I t I tend to not believe that's going to happen. Um, but as far as like what a figure it could be, if it's if it's brand new figure, then cool, you know. Uh, I can't say I was the biggest fan of the, the transmutate character from Beast Wars, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, that Build-A-Figure was ugh, a little janky, but, you know, it was good that we got one. But yeah, I, I, I don't... I really can't envision what this thing is going to turn into. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't actually transform, 
but maybe it just comes with a bunch of accessories or something like that. That would be interesting to see. So yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what it's gonna uh, what it's gonna be and what it's gonna look like. But I'm I'm definitely holding off on getting too excited about it until I actually see the thing. I have an idea of what it's going to be. The or the uh, the the transmutate. I think I have an idea of what they're gonna use. Um, and it's uh, just trying to pull up the name because I can't remember it off the top of my head. I'm thinking that they're gonna use uh, that. Uh, the Paleotrex, uh, one of these, uh, one of these new kingdom figures that's, uh, may not be Paleotre- Paleotrex or it might be one of the the other ones, but that's what I'm thinking they're going to use as the, uh, the, the remold for, uh, for, um, what's his name? Transmutate. He's a build a figure. He was a build a figure. And, uh, now they're going to turn him into this, uh, kind of modulator. Uh, what is he called now? The I don't know what they're calling these guys. The Fossilizer. Fossilizers, yeah. So I think that's what they're going to use. Is... By the way, Transmutate is female. Cool. The character. All right. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Uh, um, but that's that's my speculation on it. Um, Charles, since you uh, chimed in, Transmutate for you, I mean, that's got to be kind of close to your heart. I mean, uh, it's... You yourself are a bit of a robot that has been put together from cobbled together, I might say, as from parts of other robots. Uh, what see, am I, Autobot X? <laughs> is is seeing transmutate kind of getting a new figure here? Is that bringing up some kind of feelings from your childhood, from when you were a tiny little robot? No. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, transmutate. The answer is- I expected from a robot. Exactly. <laughs> My emotion chip is not turned on. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. Uh, G2 Ramjet is fine. I mean, I'm also not collecting all the Seekers, so I, I have a, I have Thrust and I have Starscream for the new Earthrise Seekers, and that's enough. I don't need, an, I don't need to get the whole set of Seekers, but for people who like all the multicolored Seekers... It's nice to to you know complete everything. G two Ramjet is it's a good color scheme for Transmutate. Uh, it's that's also fine. I mean, it was one episode of Beast Wars that she was in, so I mean, I'm not too nostalgic for her. Uh, but I I also am not really. I, I I mean, I don't think she would be like they would use the fossilizer mold for her. I guess because it doesn't look. Like, it doesn't really look like anything. The fossilizer figures don't really look like anything, so I don't know how they'd make it look like. They could use the tooling and technology they made. Maybe, yeah. We I mean, I'm not, I'm not ruling it out. We can rebuild it. <laughs> they they have, have the technology. technology. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, I'm curious to see what what they, what they it is. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure it would be a remold of something because they don't they don't design new figure molds for the generation selects every generation right. selects has been a re a repaint of something or a retooling of something so i expect that uh but yeah i have no idea what it would be so um i'll look i mean i'm curious about that so that's something to look forward to we'll see all right uh yeah that's it cool well we'll keep uh, our eyes on that jeremy what are your thoughts as the biggest beast wars fan uh, i have ever seen uh, frankly, I haven't looked very hard, but uh, you are the biggest one I know. Uh, I'm assuming you want this ra- uh, transmutate fi- uh, figure because it is, you know, from the one episode. No. Maybe, maybe That's you're the, the one robot. episode that I usually <laughs> skip. <laughs> no, I just, I, I do not like that episode. I don't like the character. I just, I, I typically will skip that episode. It just. I don't know. It's just a, it's a freaky looking design, and I don't like it. <laughs> so I, I'm not on board with picking it up. But I'm, there there are a number of people that do like it, and I'm glad that they are going to have an opportunity to get it. The Ramjet, though, I am kind of excited about. I have the Sandstorm, so I have like the the um, Conehead mold. So if I get this one, I can get the um, the regular Seeker mold, and then I'm good. And I like the purples and the blues that, you know, the G2 colors looks good. 
Right on. You also have the the G two Megatron as well, right? Yeah, you got a so it go got a little G two uh, Renaissance going on over there. Yeah, they just needed to re- release a G two Prime with the the tanker truck. Or they no, I guess did. the G two one just had like Optimus on the back. Well, they right? did do that in uh, what was it Titans Return? Oh, that was too far ago. Kind of small too, compar- uh, comparatively speaking. Yeah, I mean, they, they need to take, like, the Earthrise Prime, which already has a trailer, and do a G2 version of that. I do have one more topic, and I just wanted to cover this one and see what people thought. Uh, we seem to have gotten uh, pictures here that uh, there might be a new masterpiece coming out, and it's nothing really brand spanking new. It's just a repaint, but it is for... Oh, no, sorry, not a masterpiece. I thought it was masterpiece by the thumbnail. It's just a War for Cybertron um figure uh repainted to be uh deep cover so this is the size swipe mold uh painted black with uh blue and white accents and this goes all the way back to the uh the diaclone line so deep cover was a uh originally a diaclone figure that uh didn't have a name was just a black lamborghini that had you know a blue blue head and and legs and some white they didn't bring them over that color scheme over for transformers, but uh, eventually imported the character and started using him in some kind of like uh, the, some media and gave, gave him a name deep cover. So he's uh, he does have a, um, I believe he's got a, a couple toys, but yeah, so we've gotten the option here to get a, uh, a, a new war for Cybertron figure. There does not appear to be any kind of, uh, battle damage on him which is i think is really kind of nice he's full-on black which jeremy can attest to is a very nice looking lamborghini mold i don't know i think he looks kind of cool it appears to be in a selects box um again so that's kind of nice i don't know is anybody interested in this it looks to be an e-hobby exclusive we don't have any other information what uh, what are our thoughts on this uh charles meh <laughs> yeah, right? I mean it's it's fine, but I'm not I'm not the biggest sideswipe fan, so it, you know I'm I'm not into the all the sideswipe variants. So, all right, it's not for me. They are certainly getting their use out of this mold, aren't they? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Big pass for me, but you know if you're really into all the sideswipe variants, then hey, cool. You know I've seen pictures where people have like a good ten different flavors of sideswipe all in one picture. So hey, cool. All right, and Jeremy, you're the only one who actually, I believe, has the uh, the G2 Sideswipe. So uh, what are your thoughts on uh, this one? Um, but th- this looks good. It, like you said, I have the black one. I have no need to get this. Um, but it, it's a great mold to have if you don't have it, and the colors look great. It does look like it comes with an extra gun. Mm-hmm. Um, that top one I don't think came with any of the other variants. Right, yes. All right. Well, those are the uh, the only two topics I had uh, this week. What are you talking about this week, Jeremy? I have something from X Transbots. Uh, this is MX twelve T Gravestone Youth version, which is Masterpiece Scale uh, G one Motor Master. This is a redeco of their MX twelve A Gravestone, uh, and it's in the the G one toy colors. So, uh, if you missed your chance to get the original one, this is a good chance to to pick it up. I mean, it looks like a good figure. It It's G1 Motor Master, really. I mean, he's very boxy. Uh, the, the decals and um, I don't know if these are decals or paint. I'm guessing they're decals because of the detail in them, but they look pretty good. Yeah, so it just it looks like a, a pretty nice figure. It comes out September 2021, and you can pre-order it now from all the normal places like BBTS and TF Source and stuff. So, Daryl, do you have any of these uh, X-Transbots uh, figures? No, not any of these ones. Um, I was a little late in kind of getting to deciding on which kind of set of Stunicons I was going to pick up, and then parts of, of each one of them kind of started selling out, so I just kind of missed the boat on these. It looks good. I'm hearing a lot of stuff about the fact that this guy doesn't come with a trailer and then the trailer 
is mm-hmm. insanely expensive and has put this guy way overpriced. And yeah, so it really makes it unappealing. The figure itself looks great. I mean, I really like it. So, you know, there's that, but I don't know. I mean, I have, I like the, I like the combiners. Uh, I really do. They're big now, like masterpiece scale combiners are massive. And I've started buying a lot of big stuff. So uh, I don't really have the place for all this stuff anymore. I really regret not getting on one of these guys, you know, to begin with and just kind of picking one. Looking back on it, uh, maybe I I probably made the right decision in waiting. I don't know. Uh, But it looks good. The toy colors look great. I'm jealous of anybody who's got the full set. So, yeah. In the chat here, DJ Ronan put a, put a link to the trailer, which is two hundred and thirty dollars just by itself. Yeah, exactly. Yikes! You still don't get the gravestone figure, and then this particular gravestone figure, the twelve T, is one hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah, I mean that's fairly so, affordable for the leader of this group, but you got to remember it doesn't come with a come, doesn't come with a trailer. So if you want a motor master right. to be able to use in alt mode it looks wrong yeah and um, that is just very pricey though uh, so mike what do you think are you gonna get on board with this this is actually one of the first times i'm like looking at this figure and there's a lot of really cool things happening with it but so much of it is fakery oh mm-hmm. i mean i really like the the fact that the the paint on the the truck mode actually doesn't show up anywhere in the robot but i also hate that everything about the robot is like it, all of the the kibble that you see on it is just a hundred percent fake those feet totally fake it's like seriously oh yeah oh man uh, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat that uh, Daryl is. Like, I haven't picked up any uh, any like, masterpiece combiner figures, and at this point, like a lot of the sets are already like well underway or completely finished and sold out. And it's like, eh, you know, just not really something that I'm, I'm looking to to find a complete set of right now. If anything, I would love to pick up the the old fans project uh, Sonicon set. I really love the look of them, but people are dumping those like crazy right now. You should be able to find really? those. Oh yeah, you should be able to find those really easy. That's the one that I have right now, and I like it a lot because it was really easy to get, you know, and uh, really inexpensive at the time. Hmm. But yeah, it's just one. Of those, it, it's like kind of the same argument that I've made before with masterpiece figures. It's just they're they're so overpriced, and I, I I get that this is not official masterpiece or anything, but still, I mean the the third party price markup on it, it's like ah I, I I'd love to have a full set of masterpiece figures, but you know what? That's just not in the cards. It's a good looking figure. Engineering looks amazing. Don't like the fakery on it, but. As far as the figure goes, it it looks good. Cool, yeah. And Charles, we know uh, we've been talking over the past few weeks about the fakery and stuff, and I know how much you hate that too. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I pretty much uh, got to copy what Mike just said. I mean, not not a fan of the the fake feet, faux feet. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it definitely is a nice looking figure, particularly the head makes me think of, um, the Marvel comics motor master in G1 Marvel comics. Um, so yeah, I, I like that in particular. So yeah, I mean, it's a good looking figure in robot mode and, and in truck mode for what it is, but yeah, I mean, the, all those factors that we've already mentioned, the price, the fact that the trailer is separate and super expensive. And I guess all the combiner pieces are part of the trailer as well. So you can't even really combine it without that. So, yeah, it's I think it's it's just uh, it's not the right figure. It's not the right Stunicon set for me. <laughs> I'm not, I've never been really big on the Stunicons in general. Like I, I got the Combiner Wars aerial bots and I was pretty happy with those, but I did not, I passed on the Combiner Wars Stunicons. That so, was a terrible set. 
I made the right decision then. <laughs> yeah. The fakery on this. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you that. The, the feet are fake. But I remember the discussion back when they were coming out with this guy, the original version anyway, and that they wanted it to be one to one scale with MP10 so that they could do the scene where they both kind of ran, you know, head, head to head, you know, head on to, to each other, like in the show. And they were the same size so that when you had the, the cab and the trailer, they were both the same damn size. So they are when you have them transformed in alt mode yeah. and he's the same damn size as MP10 with the trailer. Well, he's compatible with MP10's trailer. Yeah. I don't know but is he compatible? I don't I didn't know that. Yeah, that yeah, that BBTS oh, cool. um, thing All right. Like that. Well, that's neat. The um that being said, that's a really cool feature. There there really don't there aren't motor masters out that do that. With that, you can't put his feet as the front of the the trailer or the front of the cab right. when you have that that factor. So you have to fake out the feet. I don't mind the fake feet. It seems hypocritical because I really don't like fake, you know, fake chests on these Optimus Primes that they always do. <laughs> but I don't know. When, Natural when the, all the way. When the foot is the front <laughs> of a truck, it seems like it needs to be small. I don't know. It's You can't please Transformers fans. We know this. <laughs> I'm okay with the fakery on this guy. Yeah, it's probably because most other versions of the character have probably also had fakery involved. Yeah. At mm-hmm. least the recent ones. And I uh, and I get all that. And I, I, I totally understand that. If you're going to make a masterpiece figure or masterpiece scaled figure of this, there's going to have to be some ridiculous magic in order to make this thing look correct. Because in the end, you had a, a figure... The, the the animation scale on it was totally off in the first place because you had a figure with a trailer that transforms into a figure that is the same size as Prime. It just doesn't work. Which is, I think, one of the reasons why I like the look of the Fans Project one so much is because it it just it works. In terms of scale, in terms of everything, it, it just it works. But, yeah, I don't know. It, it's It's just not hitting it right for me. All right. Well, I guess we'll keep an eye on this. That's all I got this week. Uh, Mike, I think you have something else from X Transbots. I do. So sticking to the X Transbots bandwagon here, uh, we got a first look at the test shot for X Transbots. Uh, I'm I'm gonna mispronounce this so badly, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Fioravin- Fioravanti. Fioravanti. Either way, it's uh, their version of the Omnibot Overdrive. Now, we first saw this back in, what was it, late October, November or so. Uh, And at that point, it was just renders. So this is the first uh, physical test shot. And it is, you know, the the typical kind of weird green, blue, gray plastic of, uh, of test shots to kind of illustrate where all the different pieces are. But uh, in, in, we only get one kind of straight on shot for it. But this is looking pretty nice. And I've, I've always loved the, the Omnibots. I, I have no idea why, but yeah, it is. They're just, it's a really awesome concept. Uh, it it's, feels an awful lot like they are typical cars. Well, not the Overdrive, of course, because he's a Ferrari. But the other two camshaft and downshift i believe they turned into like fairly typical kind of uh, uh like day-to-day cars so it, it's there's always a nice kind of touch to it it really kind of hit the hit the point for me for robots in disguise because let's be honest no one's going to confuse no one's a a porsche a ferrari a lamborghini just riding down the street that's not in disguise <laughs> that that just it doesn't work that way but yeah, so this figure looks pretty good. Uh, it has the the little flip up gun on the on the hood that is kind of out right now, which looks a little weird. It looks kind of like a little face on their on its chest, so that's kind of funky. But otherwise, yeah, I'm liking the look. 
Charles, what about you? Do you have any interest in Omnibots? Do you have any interest in Masterpiece stuff? Do you have any interest in any of this? Or are you just <laughs> waiting for Unicron? I'm well, I am a fan of uh, Overdrive in particular because I did get an Overdrive as a, as a kid. I saved up my robot points and I sent them in and I got Overdrive. Me too. And yeah, so that, that was... That was a, <laughs> <laughs> I am fist bumping you virtually. <laughs> um so yeah he was he was a fun figure he made me think of like a a, a like a tracks because i never had a tracks figure but it made me think of tracks because he had little wings you could he had a little third uh secret mode with wings where he, you know he's a little flying car and he has little flip out guns so you know that that's a little it was a little uh bonus mode in addition to the car and the robot mode Mm-hmm. And he was he was a fun figure. So yeah, I'd like to see a, a new version of Overdrive and, and this one looks pretty good. I I I'm gonna wait till we get a, a you know a more fully developed figure and you know I wanna see how what you know what they're what they bring to it and if they if they do any like if they add any additional features and things, but I'm I'm looking forward to this. I, I don't imagine there's Hasbro's going to do an uh and overdrive anytime soon so i'm curious what uh what third party can do and this is this is the thing that third party i think is best for is taking figures that hasbro is not really going to touch or, or likely to touch and and taking them in new directions so uh this is a pretty obscure figure so hopefully we get something interesting from it cool what about you daryl did you have overdrive when you were a kid i have them now that wasn't the question. I did have him when I was a kid, yes, <laughs> but I do have him now as well. Okay. Out of the Omnibots. What's robot points in French? I don't know. Uh, it's on It's on the back <laughs> of the box. Uh, I could check for you, but uh, I don't want to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say his name, the X-Transbot's name is Fior Ravanti with, a, with an Italian, uh, you know, you got to hold your fingers up, uh, you know, pinch your, your thumb and your index and middle finger together be fior revanti that's what you gotta how you gotta say it is that something specific yes no it's it's just italian <laughs> um no <laughs> okay I, I meant i meant just the name fior revanti is, is that like something that's known I'm not italian man I'm I canadian know about fuck if i know oh, well, all right <laughs> um ask john paul bobe <laughs> he's got italian in him i uh <laughs> <laughs> I I think uh, I, I like the way this thing looks. Um, I remember, and I know from having all three o- current Omnibots, the G1 Omnibots, Overdrive, in my personal opinion, I think is the worst of the three. Uh, he's like so fiddly, his arms suck, but uh, I can't wait for them to do the rest of these guys. This, uh, this version of him here, uh, Fior Ravanti, uh, looks phenomenal. I think it looks really great. The w- headlights, I think that they have kind of sticking up here in the shot. I think it's just to show you that they can go up because you know mm. they don't need to be up like that. Obviously, the gun in the front just is a is flippable because that's the way it was in the G1 toy. But I think that this is great. I love that they're doing this. He's got this big wide chest that's the entire front of the car i love it i wish that hasbro would still do this with their their current figures i know that we did just get a whole bunch of datsuns that are doing it which is fantastic i love that but this is this is a great looking figure i love i love looking at it like this seeing the project progress of the 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 prototypes yeah i can't wait till we see uh more uh, progression on this sweet and Jeremy, are you going to complete the club over here and say, tell us you have had overdrive when you were a kid too? I, I did not. Oh, I was not wrecked. cool enough to send in my robot points. You wrecked the club. I I know. I mean, you can have him now. He's Most, like ten bucks. <laughs> yeah, a lot of my early G one toys were uh, ones my mom picked up at yard sales, so mm. I didn't really get the boxes for a lot of them. Gotcha. But. This guy looks really cool. I I I've, I agree with Daryl that it's not the best looking in terms of the character. But as a kid, I always loved the cars that could have the lights flip up like that. I thought that was just like, you know, the future. <laughs> so I like that they have that gimmick here. Um, 
I can't not see the the face that you pointed out with the, the gun. It's so crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, but this looks really cool. I I, I like it. Um, and just so you know, uh, Fioraventi is an Italian automotive design studio. Oh, cool! Oh, neat. Okay, uh, it began in eighty. What does it mean in English? I don't know. <laughs> it, it's it's the last name of the founder, hmm. and. He worked on like Ferrari and stuff. I just that's all from the Wikipedia. That's kind of cool. I kind of like it when yeah. uh, third party companies kind of do like a deep dive into a name like that. It's always kind of nice. Yeah, but this guy looks great. I, I love the the molding de- details that they have on there, like in, around his waist and stuff. It, it seems like they're putting a lot of care into the um, the figure. Awesome. Okay, well that is it for me, Charles. What did you bring to the table today? Okay, well, we've got more Flame Toys stuff to talk about. So, first up is the Flame Toys Leo Prime figure. So, this we have already talked about this one because it was announced last year. But uh, now we've got some, uh, you know, an actual image of the Furai Action Leo Prime figure. Apparently, this was going to be a model kit, but now it is just a pre-assembled action figure kit. So I guess the the action line is the model kits, but they're pre-assembled. So this will not be a kit you put together. This will just come all, you know, assembled and, and ready to go. Um, we talked a little bit about the Leo Prime. Uh, you know, this is basically Leo Convoy. And the, you know, the, it's very stylized. He's got a cape. He, his, the, um, the lion head shield arm is huge. <laughs> and, uh, but it's a, it's a, you know, if you're a fan of Leo Convoy, it's a cool figure. And, uh, you know, you might like it. You might be interested in it. Although it is a bit of a bummer that you can't put it together. So, um, you know, if you were looking, if you were looking forward to that part, unfortunately, it's it just comes pre-assembled. I have a question, Charles. Yeah. So the quality on this, this is going to be like the model kit, except just put together and maybe some paint apps or something on on the the pieces. This is not uh, like the Kurokari Kurokari Kuri line, like the the expensive mm-hmm. line, is it? Right, that's correct. So it will not be the same quality as the Kuro Karakuri line, but it will also probably not be the same price. So it will hmm. be priced like the model kit, but you won't put it put it together. And I I hope it'll be there'll be some additional paint apps or whatever to give it. There's a little no bit. die cast or anything, right? Like the more expensive lines. Yep. Hmm. So I yeah I I think they they've done this before with the previous Optimus Prime I think there's a there's a, an action version that you come that is already pre-assembled I don't know if they you know if the, if they give you a little bit more details or or tooling or something to to distinguish it or if it's really just everything put together Well maybe in a few weeks we can have someone on that knows all about this <laughs> You're such a tease, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Mike, the, the, this uh, does this uh, lower your your desire for this figure? It certainly does. If I'm going to buy something that is effectively a model kit, I want to put it together myself. That's part of the draw for it. If like, I have no desire of buying a effectively completed model kit. That being right. said, I really do like the look of this. I would, because if, if this were a model kit, I would probably choose not to put that giant white thing, that like the, the mane or something, whatever it's supposed to be, uh, behind, uh, behind Leo Prime's neck, because I'm not really a big fan of that. But the rest of it, I'm fine with. So since this is going to be effectively an action figure, I don't know if I can take that off. And they had... Yeah, that bugs me a little bit. Yep. Hmm. I'm sure you can rip it off. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe, but I don't know. But in terms of the look, I, I do really like it. It looks, I think, pretty badass. 
Mm-hmm. I, if, like I said, if it was a model kit, I would probably put a lot of like metallic paint on this thing, especially on that lion shield. Kind of get a nice uh, uh, like gold or brass on the gold on the the yellowy the yellowy orange parts of that shield. I think that would look really awesome. But but yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe if we see some other images or something for it. But yeah, it 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 is a bit of a disappointment. Mm-hmm. Daryl, what are your thoughts? I mean, it looks cool. It, this is definitely their stylized line. I don't know. I like it, and I'm a, I'm a fan of of Leo Prime, Leo Convoy. This is something that I mean, I like the model kits. I'm to that point where I own three of them. I've put together two or two of them. The first one I ever got is still sitting in its box. I haven't touched it yet. I really have to be excited about put something together to actually open the damn thing. So as a person with not as much extra time as I would have had before, I can appreciate buying something pre-assembled. So I, I'm fine with them doing this. And uh, I like the line. From what I remember, the ones that have come out before, because they'd started to do this line with the previously released uh, Optimus and Megatron, I believe, and they were essentially the same price plus a 10 bucks i think they were so they were just charging it 10 bucks to put it together for you which if you've done one it takes you hours right 10 hour, or 10 bucks is not a lot of time or not a lot of money to spend on the amount of time that you save to doing it and for people who don't have the time to spare uh, it's money well spent so yeah, if it comes out looking the exact same, there are people who really do enjoy the the relaxing aspect of putting these models together, and I get it. But uh, if you wanted this figure and you really don't have the time, the option, you know, having the option to just buy it finished is fantastic. So I like the figure. He wouldn't be one that I'd buy even if it were a model kit. I, I appreciate what they're doing. They're, they're coming out with different stuff for all the different uh, avenues of the fandom. Yeah, I think I think that's that's fair enough that to have the option of having um having a pre-built version of the kit. I think the problem here is that there is no version of the kit that you can put together. So Right. Well, not that's yet. That's the Yeah, well, I, I yeah, I don't know. Uh maybe they'll they'll hold that back for later. I don't know. Yeah, well, maybe really... we can ask somebody in a couple of weeks. I don't I don't know. <laughs> maybe. All right, Jeremy, well, what do you think of this guy? I think he looks great. Uh, I, I love the cape that goes into the, the main, like, unlike Mike, I, I, I really think that looks cool. I mean, it does look very anime, but I really like it. Um, my biggest complaint is that most of the, the pieces are supposed to look like fur, or look like feathers to me. And that's just probably, it's just how they molded it. To me, it kind of looks more like feathers and that's it's obviously supposed to be fur yeah but i i like it i like the he has a like the sword and the scabbard you know he can you can have the sword in there or you can have it in his hand i i just this guy looks really great but yeah i would i, I do wish that it had a um a model kit version you know as someone that has put together one of the model kits i do also appreciate paying someone else to do it for me because it's not really as relaxing for me. <laughs> Maybe with the the feather look, they're going for Griffin Prime. Yeah. All right. Well, I have one more Flame Toys announcement, and this is uh, something that we hadn't seen before, but it's not totally unexpected or totally out of the blue because Flame Toys is doing an RC uh, model kit now. So... And if you look at the the we just have a sketch basically and you if you look at the sketch I can see a lot of the Windblade figure in this RC version here. I think the basic body shape and design is very much uh the Windblade figure they've already got coming out so it looks like they they repurposed that and and did an RC design which uh yeah, I, I actually I I think this this is something that I I might be interested in. So I, I passed on the Windblade figure, but the RC figure, uh, at least, it, it looks a little bit uh, more 
blocky and less curvy than the windblade design so i'm i'm on board for it at least for right now for seeing the for seeing the sketch uh so we'll we'll wait and see it's probably going to be a little while before we see uh you know an actual uh physical sample but uh jeremy does this rc interest you at all yeah i mean it looks very good very non-controversial <laughs> very <laughs> I mean, very plain, you know, it just basically is RC with nothing extra. I can also see some of the wind blade designs, but it just, it seems like they were trying to do the most plain and offensive RC that they could after getting burned by the whole wind blade thing. Well, you can still pose her in, uh, in whatever poses you like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever the, the purchaser wants to do, that's not their problem. <laughs> Daryl, what do you think of this RC sketch design here? Well, I can tell you that I have still seen somebody take this sketch and edit it to be not as feminine as it is uh, because they still find it controversial. You're still going to have people get upset. Um yeah. Well, what was I it think you just it said about Transformer fine, fans? But whatever. It's fine. The super skimpy bikini that they have on her in this is probably something that's, you know, drawing a lot of ire. Whatever is what I would say to that. It's, if you don't like it, don't buy it. I agree with uh, with you, Charles, that there is an awful lot of that Windblade mold in here. And uh, they probably just... I, I, be, I believe there's an awful lot of the legs. There's probably a lot of them that are the same, and the arms are probably very similar too. So the torso and the head and, and back are are probably what they just kind of swapped out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, I think it's fine. I, I I have no qualms with it. It's I don't know whether I'm going to be purchasing any more of these model kits uh, unless they do something really great. It's not a matter of I don't like the model kits. It's a matter of space. I need... I need space to do things right now, and and whatever I buy has got to be worth it. So, um, and if I can do two things with with my figures, being in robot or alt mode, then that's uh, that's a bonus. And and these they're fun to put together, but uh, they only do one thing when you're done. And uh, generally, you don't take them apart again after you're done. So, so not they're not Lego. <laughs> But yeah, so no, I think it looks fine. It looks like a nice RC. I wish she came with some guns. Like, I mean, she might. I guess this is just a design sketch, right? But I wish she comes mm-hmm. like, comes come with some badass guns or some swords or some shit. That'd be great. But yeah, I think it looks fine. No, no, no issues for me. I'm gonna reserve judgment until I actually see some like production samples because it's it's. Just a sketch, and at this point, it, it's barely a recolored sketch. It's like there's there's no point in getting upset or anything about this because it, it it's just a drawing. Let's just wait and see what we actually get for the model kit. And if you really don't like it, then don't buy it. But yeah, there's there's no point in getting pissed off about a sketch like this. All right, well, that is my toy topic, so that takes us to the end of the toy section, and we will move on to trips to the store. And this is where we show off all the cool Transformers stuff we got this week. We do this as a video, so you can see everything we got on YouTube in beautiful high definition. But we also have the audio right here in the podcast, so you can keep listening as we describe everything we got in loving detail. And without further ado, Trips to the Store. The Transmissions Podcast will return after these messages. All right, uh, let's show off the stuff we got, and I'm going to go first. All right, uh, not a huge haul this week for me, but I did get a couple of MicroMasters. I got Fuser and Blastmaster, the... Autobot Micromaster Space Shuttle Combiner Team. So there they are. And it's got a... Yeah, they're a little cool. They're cool. Uh, this, It's even got a NASA logo on the back of the Space Shuttle. Oh, let me see if I can show it. <laughs> if I can get... There it is. <laughs> Blurry, but it's there. We believe you. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's all I got. Two little MicroMasters. Um... And I'm showing them to myself and not the camera. So that's, <laughs> there they are. Well, that's, you're all that matters. <laughs> Fuser and Blastmaster. And they combine to form Space Shuttle. <laughs> there they are. All right, uh, Jeremy, you go next while I all transform right, my I, figures. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few things. Um, I made it to the comic book shop for the first time in... Uh, few weeks so i had a few things to pick up uh i have transformers versus or transformers back to the future number two uh this is the Juan samu cover pretty cool i have transformers galaxies number 12 which finished up the uh the series and the ultra Magnus run uh, this is andrew griffith's cover um, cover a i have uh, transformers escape number one that we talked about last week this is cover a um, uh, Beth McGuire Smith's cover. And then I have what we're going to talk about on alt mode this week. Transformers number 26. Uh, this is cover A, the Freddie E. Williams cover. And this is neat. It, it is a combined front and back. So Ooh. it's pretty cool. So I got all those. And then I also got a box from Daryl, finally, that he sent, like, in December. <laughs> <laughs> so... But uh, whereas like Charles got his in a relatively decent amount of time, it took a lot longer for me. Uh, in it, he had a lot of comics. I'm not going to show off because they weren't Transformers, um, but a couple Silver Age Superman books, and then some more recent Marvel books. But then also uh, got Runamuck, which I haven't opened yet, but I am excited about this guy. So thanks nice. so much. That Cheryl. was from the. Uh... That was from the Hasbro box. Oh, you said, oh, I you forgot. said you wanted yeah. it, so I sent it to you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I forgot that I asked for it. So thank you, Hasbro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's awesome. So that's all I got this week. All right, Daryl, we're moving on to you. All right. Well, uh, nobody sent me a box. Uh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> you got all bro. those figures I'm I'm already. Kid, I'm, I know uh, one thing that I have I don't have anything new so uh, I went to the vault and uh, pulled out uh, well a figure that I generally just keep in the box because of its rarity and I don't want it covered in dust so uh, this is my um, what's his name yeah he's uh, he's a power core combiner you know how awesome those are so this is Power Core Combiner Heavy Tread. Um, he is... Uh, the Power Core Combiner component of him is not overly rare. Um, the add-on for him is, though. This is the Make Toys uh, Mobine Missile Launcher add-on. This is called the Jungle Type. Uh, this thing is exceedingly rare. This was... $49, I think it was, when I first bought it. And I held on to a pre-order for this thing forever. And I wanted it because this on, you know, this little set on this this Power Core Combiner looks fucking badass. Like, I loved it. Um, so the, the pre-order that I had never, ever got filled. And I'm like, what is going on with this thing? It's I've held this pre-order for like a year where is this thing? And finally it got sent to me and the story around it was bonkers. The, 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 I guess the, the ship carrying the, 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 what are they called? The, the, the cat, the containers. The containers. Yeah. Yeah. Full of these things from Japan. It's like the container fell off the ship. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sunk to the bottom of the ocean and the only ones that made it over was this handful that came over like earlier so i got one of them and there's there i believe there's there's maybe a couple dozen of these things that are that are kicking around the price immediately shot up to like some ungodly number i still because i maintained my pre-order still got it for the 50 bucks that i pre-ordered it for I've ne never seen one of these go for less than $250. So 
but I, I love this thing. It's badass. It's just, it looks awesome. You can attach it to a heavy tread in alt mode and you know, he, he just looks amazing with it. And it goes on any of the power core combiners, but I think heavy tread and there's another one. I think he's called bomb burst or something like that. He also looks pretty, pretty good with it too. But, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm showing off this week. Uh, um, just a really cool figure that, uh, once he's combined with it, doesn't really transform, but technically is a transformer. So there you go. That's actually really a cool mold too. I finally found a, a copy of Heavy Tread for myself uh, at a con a couple of years back. Uh, someone had dropped it in like the five dollar bin or something like that. Uh, but I've never seen that figure like less than fifty. Oh wow! The price of Heavy Tread shot up because this mold, this this add on was was slated to come out. Yep. And I couldn't find it retail i had to pay 36 dollars for it at the time to to get the the mold to come to me over ebay mm. what was the um what was the name of the add-on it's the make toys mobile missile launcher jungle type but there's a there's a marine type that there were more of there are currently from what i could tell there are no sold listings or no active listings on ebay mm-hmm. for it yeah and uh not even for the other the other set either so yeah yeah it's it's quite rare damn all right thanks daryl and we will finish up the show with my transform shuttle (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but we'll actually go to mike because mike's got his christmas haul to show off that i do i haven't been on since uh christmas so this is going to be a big actually this was a pretty big haul for christmas uh this year Uh, a couple of things post christmas as well which is always fun Uh, So starting off, we got Airwave from Earthrise. Uh, I was finally able to find him. I think he just got in stock very quickly on Amazon or something like that, and someone picked him up for me. So Airwave is always cool. Same complaints that I have about him that uh, that I addressed on a previous show, but still a neat figure, and I do like that I now have him. Uh, to echo you there, Jeremy, I have also gotten myself a run amok. And am hopefully going to yes. find runabout at some point, but I am not holding my breath because just like the last set of runabout and run amok, I got the white one, didn't get the black one. So. Mm. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> well, which one is it? I, I think he's like a, uh, which one is the, the Walmart exclusive? It's Target. It's the black one is is runabout. He's a Target exclusive. Gotcha. Maybe that's why you're not seeing it. Maybe. I've been to Target a couple <laughs> I've been to Target a couple times and every time it's always just been like wiped out. Like I've never seen like anything there. Uh anyway. Found uh, a trailbreaker on Hasbro Pulse. Finally nice. got in stock. Yeah. Trailbreaker is always fun. Had the hoist figure from way back, so I love that. Gigawatt arrived. Nice. But a week, a week, week and a half ago. So, yeah, loving that. Was yours the pre-order from Hasbro Pulse or from Walmart? From Hasbro Pulse. Okay. No so, one got the Walmart one, pre-orders. <laughs> well, I, I saw yeah. someone on Facebook got the Walmart one today, and they're the numbered ones. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, certainly not the numbered ones. Uh, but still, I love it. And I'm kind of glad that I waited for the, the second run, or at least that I was forced to wait for the second run because the, the whole window detail with like the darker windows is mm-hmm. a lot nicer. So I'm glad that happened. Is the but Walmart got, one, is it got the shit windows? Supposedly. Like I think the, they the fixed the windows, but I think it has the um, the bad paint job. Oh. Hmm. I saw comparison picks for it, and yeah, like the second run ones from Hasbro Pulse certainly look better. So, I don't know which version uh, came to EB Games for you there, uh, Daryl, but... It was a good version. The good version? Okay. Uh, And a total surprise for Christmas, through several people, I ended up getting all three volumes of the Transformers manga. (laughs) They're out of sequence. It's going to bug Charles. You're going to have to fix that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to leave it like right there. In fact, let me zoom in on that. There we go. You can't uh, hurt has, me. How does that, that make you feel, Charles? Huh? I'm fine. I, I have no problem. 
Okay. Uh, yep. So I got all these. I was like, again, super surprised. I ended up getting one from one person, one from another person, and then a gift card for to Barnes and Noble so I can get the last <laughs> one. So do you have I don't to, know who coordinated. Do you have to read number three first? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. In I think it's in volume three. There's one issue that's that's printed left to right instead of right to left, and it threw me so much. <laughs> Yeah, so weird. But I'm really glad to to get those. I ended up getting a, a lot of the the kind of bizarre, like off topic kind of uh, books, like things like art books and visual guides and stuff like that. I love getting those, so I have a pretty big collection of those over there. So I'm really glad I got those for Christmas. So that was that's awesome. But the last thing that I want to show off, and Daryl, you're gonna have no interest in this, but Charles and Jeremy will. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this without the glare. Oh. The rule book for Empire of Rust, full color print, hardcover, bound book. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. That's yep. nice. Wow. 100 That's snazzy. For, yeah. 140 <laughs> pages, stuff that, uh, that I and all of the, the players helped to, to create and to build. So it's even got that new book smell. Oh, so beautiful. Well done. Is this something you're going to be selling or? No, uh, no, because like the artwork that's in there is not our artwork or anything. So that just, that wouldn't be right. But yeah, you know, maybe at some point in the future, uh, I can get some artwork commissioned and then I clean up all of the, like the copyrighted materials. Cause we have stuff for uh, that Charles that you helped to write for like the history Mm -hmm. and lore of uh, the, the Autobots and Decepticons and like all of that. It, although the material itself isn't, like what you wrote isn't copywritten it still it it really does hit like all of the the stuff that hasbro would yeah. probably say mm, no no <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. only we knew some artists that could also help you with that <laughs> i know right yeah <laughs> how how many how many uh of those did you just get one made for each of your players there or how many did you get made or just one for you <laughs> <laughs> i did do uh five so okay cool Nice. I don't think I don't think the guys watch uh, uh watch the trips to the store stuff. So, <laughs> well, you don't. <laughs> I know. I don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, like once, that's really uh, cool though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'm gonna send uh, all that over to them as their uh, as their gifts. So yeah. nice, good stuff. But yeah, 140 pages of a uh, of awesome artwork and rules and everything and i think that with all the work that's gone into it so far i think at some point in the future i will see if i can get some some actual artwork put up for it and then do like i could just suggest it clear it all the copyright material and who knows maybe actually uh, actually sell the thing mm-hmm. nice yeah you'd have to call it uh transmorphers or something (laughs) transmission empire yeah transmissions empire of rust yeah (laughs) yeah nice that's it i'm done i am spent all right that will do it for this week's trips to the store we now return to the transmissions podcast All right, we're back from our trips to the store, and we will move on to convention news. Uh, Just one quick update. Uh, IACON Online is coming up uh, January 30th and 31st, and we we went through a bunch of the stuff in alt mode last week, but they do have a panel that is toy-related, so I wanted to mention it here. Uh, It is called History of the Tiny Transformers, From Micromasters to Minicons to BotBots. I'll definitely recommend checking out that panel and we'll have all of their other uh, media related announcements in alt mode this week, but um, you know, check it out. It it looks like it's going to be just a a really fun impact convention. So that is it for convention news. All right. And we will finish up the show with feedback. And we got a couple of pieces of feedback actually touching on the same issue. So maybe we'll do, we'll uh, go through both of the feedbacks uh, first and then we'll have a little discussion on it. So 
Starting off, we got a voicemail from Dr. Pants, uh, occasional co-host and friend of this show. So, uh, Dr. Pants, take it away. You're, you're getting extra time on the show. Hello, Transmissions Podcast. It's Dr. Pants, and I'm replying to a question you posed in last, week, last week's toy show when you were talking about uh, Masterpiece Toys and whatnot. Um, you had asked about how the viewers felt and whatnot, and... I think I've voiced my opinions in the show about it, but I just kind of want to go a bit more in depth into how I feel about the Hasbro Takar like masterpiece thing going on. Because uh, truth be told, I have a couple of masterpieces like Masterpiece Wheeljack and I have a Masterpiece Hot Rod. I had the first version of the Seeker. I've got an MP01. I've got an MP10. Um, And the one thing I want to say is like looking at the newer masterpieces, like they don't appeal to me because as you guys brought up in the show, like, in order to transform him, it looks like you have to flip the entire robot inside out just to get that cartoon accuracy. Whereas I look at, like, some of the older figures, and Masterpiece Wheeljack is a fun figure to mess with. He's really, really cool. Um, I actually didn't hate the old version of the Seeker, either, the first one. Yeah, it didn't look great, but I didn't hate the transformation. And MP10, I mean, that's a great Optimus Prime figure. I don't think going forward I'm picking up any masterpieces anytime soon because not only do, do the ideas of the transformation not appeal to me, but how they look doesn't either. That masterpiece Bumblebee and the MP Prime, like, they look super glossy. Like, they're coated in this thick layer of enamel paint when I look at them and they don't appeal to me. And masterpiece Bumblebee, like, it's super kibbly and I just, I just don't like it. Now, the masterpiece Starscream and Thundercracker and everything looks kind of cool, but... At the same time, I mean, they're going to be over $200. And, I mean, honestly, if I'm talking about looks and everything, I kind of like the Make Toys versions better, and they're $150. So, there's... I, I would rather go with the Make Toys version. In fact, I have a Make Toys um, Meteor pre-ordered, so I can put that in my collection of Decepticons. The other thing that goes along with it is, um, I have a Masterpiece Hot Rod. I just got the Studio Series 86 Hot Rod. That's a better figure than the Masterpiece one. It has no backpack. The transformation is great. The proportions are great. It just looks amazing overall as a figure. And now I'm like, do I need my Masterpiece Hot Rod anymore? Because I have a figure that's better. Sure, it's a bit smaller, but in general, it's a better looking figure and it's a more fun figure. The transformation's great. And in general, the transformation for the Generations figures has been astounding. I know I've brought it up, I know you guys have brought it up, but a lot of these Earthrise and Siege figures have felt like mini masterpieces. I just got the Kingdom Warpath, and I love that figure. The transformation is so kind of crazy and weird with the legs that, like, it just looks so good in robot mode too. I'm, I'm astounded. And to be honest, the stuff they're putting out in Generations makes me wonder, do I need masterpiece stuff anymore? If I'm not too concerned with the tune accuracy. So I think Masterpiece figures going forward, it's a matter of do you want tune accuracy displays? Like, does it have to be animation accurate? Then you're probably going to have to get the Masterpiece figure. But if you want something that's fun to transform and looks pretty close to the character and is way more affordable, I don't think there's a reason to get into it. Now, truth be told, I'll probably still pick up a few third-party figures because... I mean, I've mentioned I want those train bots, so unless Hasbro Takara announces their ride and it's amazing, um, I'm going with the Moon Studio train bots. And also, I'm waiting for Make Toys to finish up their Headmasters, because I'm doing that set, and their Target Masters, but I just, I can't go with the Masterpiece figures anymore. Um, like I said, I only had a few, nothing great, but they're, they've priced me out, and it's not my aesthetic personally anymore, and I need a fun transformation, and none of these have looked fun anymore, so... Unfortunately, that's where I stand. Thanks a lot, guys, for everything you do, and I'll catch you some other time. All right. Thanks, Dr. Pants. And uh, then we got another message from uh, one of our Donatrions on the Discord. This is Zombie Gavin. And uh, he makes a similar point about the Masterpiece figures. He says, touching on your point in this week's show about the price versus complexity issue with Masterpiece figures, I generally don't understand how... Hasbro Takara can justify charging such an insane price for MP44, which I personally think looks like a mess of panel lines, when Transform Element put out an incredible MP scale Optimus Prime for a quarter of the of that cost, which looks incredible in both modes and has a satisfying and intuitive transformation. 
I know MP44 comes with a metric fuck ton of accessories that Transform Element 01 doesn't have, but even the Nemesis Prime repaint of that mold costs more than double the price of Transform Element 01, and it comes with almost the exact same set of accessories. So yeah, another another uh, mention about how the Masterpiece toys are getting prohibitively expensive and the complexity is, you know, a bit of a turnoff in, in terms of playing with the figure. So Daryl, do, do you agree with Dr. Pants and uh, Zombie Gavin? I do. I do agree. Um, and, uh, you know, I, we definitely had a, a nice chat about it last week. The, um, I haven't gotten any of the Studio Series 86 figures yet, so I can't really comment on them, but they do look good. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting those. Um, the uh, I'd like to mess with an MP44 at least, but for one of those figures, it doesn't look like it's a figure that you can easily just mess with, that you actually just have to sit down and study some you know instructions, which from all accounts are terrible. So you have to, you know... It's not a fun figure to, 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 you know, to transform. So I agree with uh, Dr. Pants on the fact of, you know, you really want to enjoy the transformation. I like to open up a figure and leave the instructions in the box. And I try to figure out whether I can actually do it without the instructions. Nine times out of ten, I can, which is great. If I open a figure and... I can't figure out what the hell I'm looking at anymore. Like it just kind of explodes and it, I'm just looking at something that's a mass of colors and panels. I'm not having fun anymore. I'm just, I'm, you know, I start to get frustrated, which is not what these things are supposed to be about. And the fact that they cost so much is, you know, a big, a big turn off as well. I haven't messed with any of the, uh, what is it? The, the transform element figures. I've, I've heard that they are also a very good uh, uh, MP scale prime as well. They did one that's really good. There's also a, a, a Magic Square one that's also really good. Yeah, those were the two that were really kind of competing at the same time as the MP44. This is going to be the uh, kind of the, the, the turning point for, for Masterpiece. The, there's Like we talked about last week, there's always going to be the, the fan out there that regardless of what uh, uh, Hasbro Takara is putting out, they're going to buy it because they're the ones with the IP and that's what they're getting. Has our third party be damned. It's, you know, that's, they're not allowed to put it out. And if they're putting it out, that's, it's wrong and it's doesn't, it's not official and I don't want it because it's fake and, you know, whatever their arguments are, if I can stretch my money out over, you know, two, maybe three figures, in third party as opposed to one in the in the in the official masterpiece then i mean i gotta go where my money can go the furthest right but yeah uh it's you gotta make up your own mind and if masterpiece is pricing people out right now what were their their you know hardcore fans then perhaps they're pushing people that were on the fence to begin with more towards the third party you know are they doing more harm than good that's uh that's another avenue but everyone's got to make up their own mind so fair enough uh mike do you have any thoughts on the mp masterpiece uh exploding complexity and cost curves yeah it's it's a situation where they already priced me out of it. I mean, to be honest, like they priced me out of it back when they were uh, going up to like 70, 80, 90. Like once they started eking towards 100, I think it was already uh, pushed out. I was already getting pushed out of it. And it's it's not just Masterpiece either. I mean, it, it's mainline stuff. It's, it's, it's nearly everything. I mean, prices are increasing significantly and... Like, I'm not making an equivalent amount of money con considering. <laughs> so, you know, like, like, deluxes have doubled in price over the last 10 years. My salary hasn't doubled. So, <laughs> there, there, this is a problem right there. And, and yeah, it's just the, the price for them. I mean, when you're looking at, like, $200, $250 for a, for a masterpiece figure, it's just, 
it's it's too much. It's way too much. I mean, I could get a like one of the highest quality like third party figures out there, which is presumably going to be just as well, if not better made with more stuff to it than that masterpiece figure. Or I could, you know, put that money aside for like two or three MPs and, you know, get something like the the size of Unicron, just say. I know I'm not going to be able to. I'm not Charles. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's just, that's kind of what it is. As far as the complexity part of it, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm certainly not a fan of, of kind of flipping the entire figure inside out. And we saw that earlier when we were talking about the, the, uh, the fans, the X, no, I'm sorry, not fans, sorry, the X Transbots, uh, Motormaster figure. It's like, it, it's an interestingly engineered figure and I like the look of it, but I don't like the fakeness of it. And when you have a F MP figure that's doing that, that's flipping inside out and becoming super complex in order to transform. It's like, mm. uh, what was it? MP, MP1, the original MP1 Prime. I think that was a good example of a, a significant amount of complexity that still resulted in a really good looking figure because there were some pieces that, that did kind of open up and flip around and kind of hide within it. I'm look. I'm thinking about the the front wheels of the cab where they kind of like all just they turn around and then flip inwards to form the sides of his uh, his his abs, something like that. It's like okay, you know that that's that's I think the level of where an MP should be in terms of complexity. I don't think you really need to just flip out completely in order to get a a good look out of it. Uh, the one good example of, of a thing what not to do is that um, I think it's the latest Bumblebee mold where it just looks like his feet are made up of like four different panels that just all fold together. It's like, yeah, that doesn't doesn't look that great, especially if you're trying to to push that like that cartoon aesthetic. And it just it doesn't doesn't work with it. So. I know I talked around in a circle on that one, but, but yeah, it's, it, it's already, they've already priced me out of it. So, you know, looking at all the stuff, it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving that we get all these figures, but it, it's, they're just, they're not for me. It's out of my price range at this point. All right. And, uh, Jeremy, what do you think? I, I have to agree. Um, they're, they're too pricey for, for my budget. And the complexity, you know, I, I am like Daryl, where I, I first like to transform it without looking at the directions. And I get frustrated when I can't figure it out. But when you get those figures that you, you're like, you're trying to, you're fiddling with it and it suddenly just something moves the right way and it's just so satisfying you know, that, that you, it, you worked it out and you're like, that was really ingenious how they did that. So I, I appreciate all the, the engineering that they're putting into these new figures, but it's just like, like you said, Mike, it's just too expensive. And I don't know. I just feel like the, the desire for the animation accuracy is always going to mean you have so many compromises in the transformation that it's just, I don't know, it's increasing the complexity it's and it's increasing the cost. And that's just not really where I'm at right now. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with like the Dotsons and the, the ones that I got that were um, from a few years ago. And, you know, like Dr. Pants said, the Masterpiece Wheeljack isn't a great pit figure. It's fun to, to play with, fun to transform. And I think that's probably where you know i kind of fell off is like where they, they went from that level to where they are now you know it's just it's something i'll admire and if i want something with the cartoon accuracy i'll more likely go to something like the flame toys figures where they would it's not transformable but it, you it gets the look and then if i want something transforming you know the the current generations line is doing great all right. And for me, I'm in a similar boat. I 
Um, I still have a bunch of boxed masterpiece figures I'd like to open up and, and play with. So I, I think I'm I'm kind of done with the masterpiece line at this point. You should just take off like a week of work and just play with all your toys. <laughs> I probably need a month at this point. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, I I think all the reasons you guys stated for the the masterpiece, and all the reasons uh, Gavin and Doctor Pant stated are are totally valid. So it's unfortunate, uh, yeah, they're pricing this out of the masterpiece market. But yeah, those designs are, I guess, not what not what I'm looking for. I like a an intuitive transformation that you know makes you makes you want to transform it and want to play with the toy. So. Yeah, maybe maybe the masterpiece line is not is is not meant for. They don't want you to transform it too much. So I don't know. All right, well that's all our feedback, and that will do it for this episode of Transmissions. Uh, Mike, do you want to tell everyone where they can find your stuff online? Yeah, certainly. So you can definitely find Empire of Rust in all of your podcast feeds. So definitely give a listen to that. Even if you do have to binge like 40 plus episodes. <laughs> Daryl. Paint that house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, otherwise, you can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Minervian. That's M-I-N-E-R-V-I-O-N. And I tend to post a bunch of... Uh, toy photography stuff that I've, uh, well, to be honest, I haven't actually posted in the last week or two, which is my bad, but I got to get back into that, uh, along with uh, examples of like 3D work and stuff that I've done, which is mostly day job stuff, but still uh, good looking stuff. So definitely take a look uh, and definitely take a uh, to join us on the Discord, uh, the Empire of Rust Discord channel on transmissions and talk to us there as well. Yeah, there's there's some fun times there. It's a it's a small community, but it's growing. So if you're if you're a listener of the Empire of Rust, just just come hang out. Transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. All right, before we end the show, of course, we got to give a shout out to our masterpiece Donatrions. And thank you again to John 4 x Levengood and Dinobot Maximize. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for continuing to support us and at such a high level. We really appreciate it. And that'll do it for this episode of Transmissions. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, all. Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions Podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Charles, high energy. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Energy! Acting! Brilliant! <laughs> it's gotta get that inner excitement there going, Charles, huh? <sighs> Shut up! All right. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Welcome to Transmissions! Uh, podcast. Numeration. <laughs> <laughs> Numeration. <laughs> Terrible impression, Daryl. <laughs> Hello out there in Radio Land. Welcome to After <laughs> Welcome back to NPR. This is our plastic robot talk. All right, here we go. I'm here today with the world's leading experts on uh, Transformers. Uh, go ahead and say hello, Big C. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Spend all our energy in <laughs> before we even start the freaking show. Well, Mike's got outtakes to choose from now. <laughs> See, I make certain that I have the outtakes to use. <laughs>
Jeremy, have you been uh, keeping up with DC lately? Yes, unfortunately. Can you give me a recap of the last 10 years? (laughs) (laughs) Can I get glasses that don't reflect? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> just take them off like I do. I, i'd appreciate that <laughs> well at least we know when you're watching porn on there right do you because i've done it many times during trips to the store yeah <laughs> okay <laughs>